precision microgravity, cosmic orchestration, symphonies of ionized winds. This is the view on the spectacular that enthralled, enchanted a young girl one hot summer night, July 1969, sequestered away high up in an oak tree, having a conversation with the stars, waiting for the man on the moon to invite me to come and dance, thinking about what must it be like to be up there, when suddenly out of the darkness I heard a voice calling my name, Yvonne. Yvonne, finally, destiny had found me, except that it sounded strangely familiar and realized my dad was calling me to come inside. <laughs> a little bit frustrated, terribly annoyed, walked in silently, he pointed to the TV screen. Grainy image, man walking on the moon. Couldn't believe it, ran outside, looked at the moon. Guess what I saw? Nothing, back inside, still walking on the moon. Ran back outside, looked at the moon. What did I see? Nothing. About two hours later, I started to realize I was less intrigued or absorbed with what the man on the moon must look like and so much more enthralled with what I must look like to him as he looked back on Earth. At that moment, my dreams took wings and I knew then that I too wanted to see one day my footprint on the moon. But in order to get started, I had to get on to business. So I hopped on my tricycle, didn't get too far, got very tired, realized that I was probably a little too early to have rockets under my feet, but knew I needed to get smarter feet. So I graduated from San Francisco, San Francisco State University, a degree in biochemistry. Excellent, outstanding. On to the University of Washington School of Medicine. And from there, because of my Air Force scholarship, served as a senior flight surgeon, flying in all sorts of high performance jets, F-111s, F-15s, F-16s, F-17s, anything, anything going to orbit. I wanted to be in, but it didn't get quite high enough nor quite fast enough. Loved the helicopters, absolutely enthralled with the medical evacs, but I really wanted to get higher. At that time, the only way to get higher and faster, space shuttle. Ah, oh, the space shuttle. If I could put poetry to motion, I would call it the space shuttle with its transportation system. Less than 10 minutes, you're 250 miles above the Earth, going 17,500 miles per hour, and as you take off your seatbelt, you're what? You're floating. Who needs solid rocket boosters? Who needs main engines? You're weightless. Who needs smart feet? It's like Story Musgrave said. It's like walking, skating on glass. But I knew if I wanted to be a part of the space program, I needed to have a lasting contribution. So I wanted to decode the human body. And it's been a privilege over the last decade and more to be able to serve as someone to evolve and enable platforms of human innovation. Everything from tricorders, looking at multi-sensored vital signs, to biocapsules that can actually sense metabolic disturbances and deliver medicine for it. Stem cell research, nutrition. Meet Rex, the Smithsonian's first fully synthetic body from retinas that receive microchip impulses to ears with cochlear implants. How about organs that are synthet synthetic, including the blood? Arms that can have 26 degrees of movement, one less than the real human body. Hands that can twist and grab, feet that can spring, exoskeletons that can allow Rex to walk, and even artificial intelligence and speech synthesizers that allow Rex to evolve and express learning and love maybe one day. This is Rex, but Rex is not meant to replace the human body, but rather to serve as a platform of restoration for those who might otherwise be diminished by illness or injury. And then there's lift. From performance to rehabilitation to aging, we are stepping up, springing forward, and turning back the clock. This is not a leap of faith, it's an experience in lift. So where does the home of innovation lie? Simply in the space that lies between your ears. For then and only then can this little girl and little girls all the world over who find themselves sequestered high up in an oak tree, just beyond the reach of innovation, lost in thought and dreams, who aspire to only one day discover how a tear falls in weightlessness. To one day see their footprint on the moon, then and only then 
can this little girl, those little girls, those little boys, and well, young people of all ages truly grow up in a world where there is space for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.